want we want faster. We want faster. Turbo car. We need to go faster. If we're not going fast with the turbo car, something's wrong. So you got your part in? Yeah. All right. Eighty dollars worth of stuff right there. That's it. <laughs> All right. His last one was broken. We did the drive. The uh, what's it called? <laughs> the drive shaft <laughs> under the car and uh, noticed that this was actually split in half. So this is a new one. So there we go. Before, after. Welcome back to the channel. All right. So we got Michael behind me. He's brought his S197 back. She Last did. video, like I said, did the, uh, uh, I forgot drive it again. Shaft. See, I said I was tired. The drive shaft. This is the new one. The old one actually separated. It was just clunking around. So we are going to fix that today. So the last video, if you haven't seen it, please click up above. Fun video, well worth your time. But we're finally in the nines. <laughs> Uh, there's still a long way to go. There's a lot of things, a lot of modification we could do to this car to actually just uh, tweak it and make it a lot faster. Remember, we weren't leaving under boost. Tires are about halfway gone and little track prep. So quite an accomplishment, yes. It's been a long time coming, but I always knew that it would happen, but I want to go a lot faster. I want, I want deep bottom nines, high eights. Because honestly, I might be the only fool on YouTube saying that um, <laughs> the nines for nines. me, at least high nines, felt slow. <laughs> Definitely the only one out there. Yeah, yeah, nines is really straight. fast. But no, I mean, the car honestly felt like butter smooth going down the track. We're not leaving under boost, so it was a softer launch. Maybe that will play into effect later on. We're actually leaving under boost, and um, you know, it'll be, be a little, I can't speak, tongue tied. It'll be a little bit more scary at that point. I don't know, but I'm excited uh, to get it back on the track. We gotta get some more tires. Um, we'll probably burn these up on the on the track a couple more times, but I mean, before we start going, I mean, it's hot. We ain't gonna go fast until it starts to cool off. So, so watch that video, people, because he is moving. He doesn't think he's moving, but when you watch the video, you can tell him in the comments, you're moving. The mile an hour is pretty good, I guess. You guys watch five, yeah. <laughs> I woke up like 10 minutes ago, just kidding. <laughs> Watch the video, you guys tell me what you think. But we're gonna get started on this. We're gonna jump to the Mustang over here, talk about some of my recipe to go nines, what it's taken, what I've done to the car, because a lot of new subscribers and not everybody follows the same video. So hopefully you're catching this one. And if you want to replicate this recipe for yourself in some manner, that's kind of why we put it on YouTube, is so that you can do so. Um, this will be your video. Yeah, let's go. Still a street car too. Air conditioning. Yeah, no, <laughs> we still got the subwoofer in the yeah, back. Exactly. Pretty much full interior. Race weight as this car sits, like I ran it, with two seats and all that stuff, weighs, with me in it, like 4,000 pounds. So, still heavy. I think to go H, we're gonna have to pull a lot of weight out of the car. But yeah. when we leave under boost, it's gonna be a whole different thing. Whole different animal. So uh, that's gonna be coming soon. Don't know if we're gonna mess around with trans brake too much. Two step, definitely yes. Second gear leave, uh, that is gonna be a video coming up. I wanna put it in the car and just kind of experience what it's like to drive that on the street and the track and just go from there. We want, we want faster, we want faster. Turbo car, we need to go faster. If we're not going fast with the turbo car, something's wrong. This is the new one, the old. Let's get the new one in, wrap the car up, he'll be good to go. Old fashioned turnkey right here. Yeah, you should uh, enjoy it a little bit more now, I think. Now that you can have some more positive transmission feel, shifter feel, with the, especially with the, the uh, I keep, good Lord, man. The drive shaft. <laughs> the drive shaft. <laughs> I, I don't know what my deal is today, but all right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Finally, the meat and potatoes of today's video. What we're gonna be talking about today is my recipe for nines. We're not leaving under boost yet. Uh, we need more tires, we need a better prep, we need a lot more practice. There's a lot of things that we can do. Now, bear in mind, since ownership of this car 
and all of the stuff that we've done to it, I probably have less than 30 passes combined both NA and boosted on this car. This is kind of cool because your average Joe out there, kind of like me that just wants to go fast and still have a street car, this is a video that you might find a little bit more personal to something that you can connect to a little bit better because you can make this thing a full brace car. You can, you can start shaving weight, you can start doing this, that, and the other. Some of the modifications might scare you uh, away from what we're doing here because we like we have a parachute you know yes uh, that is recommended for speeds in the quarter mile in excess of 150 miles per hour and uh, things like a cage a lot of people don't want to do that believe it or not I I'm not saying skimp on safety that's not what I'm saying at all but a lot of people just want to have a fast car but they still want it to be street friendly as of right now mine is so yes, unfortunately, cage is gonna have to come at some point. We will cross that bridge when we get there, or we do less quarter mile stuff and just more eighth because you're not going that fast. And I would argue the fact that eighth mile racing is more fun anyway, honestly. Uh, it's less scary up top. Not that 145 mile an hour plus is, is frightening by any means. I am, like I was saying, probably the only fool, one of the few out there that says, in my opinion, uh, nines and a quarter is really not moving that fast. I, I, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't scare me at all. The car felt completely controlled, completely flat, uh, completely um, just comfortable. And a lot of that has to do with what we have put in the car. A lot of that is suspension and stuff like that. This is a twin turbo car. For all of you guys that don't know if you're new to the channel let's go out here to the front and just get a little sneak peek of what's going on yes we have some cosmetics here we've got the anderson composites carbon fiber bits the hood this spoiler in the back which re looks really good i love it um not a whole lot else going on in the front end pretty much a stock factory looking car wheels tires the d5s i don't have front runners yet i will go with the same but this is a d5 that's about nine inches across so i have a 235 tire on there right now to kind of make it skinny we did that for street manners just to have a little bit more grip on the front for the street for the track we want to be able to swap those to a actual front runner skinny we have a beadlock uh d5 in the rear i uh, love this wheel because it's super light, maybe not as light as a weld, but certainly a lot lighter than a race star. And they don't cost a whole lot. So 305 45 17 is pretty much a go-to tire, a Mickey Thompson ET Street R. Um, visually going around the exterior of the car, you don't really need any of this stuff to go fast. So we're just gonna skimp over it. It is really just cosmetics, but the car does look good. It's kind of its own thing and uh, a little bit different and set apart from the crowd, I guess. But in the interior, before we get into the uh, the guts of the car interior we have the Cobra fx1 seats this is something that probably most of you will not do you can just take that seat out over there and uh, save some weight of course we removed our rear seat here uh, pretty much permanently so this is pretty cool this is made by a company called cm components you may be familiar with them but if you're not definitely go check them out and oh by the way we have tons and tons and tons of discounts in the video description interior wise nothing really has changed we have the shoot mount just basically bolted onto the side there honestly we're still pretty much full weight let's get into the good stuff so my engine bay pretty clean setup maybe not as clean as like a top mount blower but uh we have a fuel system two reg a dual reg fuel system this is actually from lethal performance it's really cool because you got these stainless steel uh lines here and they're coated in this black material just to you know prevent scratching or anything and it looks honestly at home kind of stealthy if you will inside of the engine bay but i just like the simplicity of the install and this is how i've run everything back here so just like that got everything screwed down into position you can pretty much mount these wherever you want to honestly you can customize it anyway but it is a triple pump f9 00000295s i believe they flow like 535 liters per hour what's the math on that so <laughs> over 1600 liters per hour running through this car have not hooked up the hop switch yet i've been running three pumps all the time i'll probably hook up the hop switch here soon because i just don't need that when you're daily driving or just kind of cruising on the street you don't need three pumps going all at once this this right here this charge pipe twin turbo car lives underneath it's a sleeper kit from hell horse performance look at these fuel rails though <laughs> lethal performance fuel rails it looks good but no the hell horse performance all these performances everywhere pretty cool because he uses twin 
6467s from Comp. This is the first video you've caught from me in a while. The big deal with that is that there is no oil lines. There's no scavenger pump, there's no nothing. They are water-cooled, the ones that I have. Suspension is a big deal for drag racing, or if you're corner carving, anything, on the street, all of it. Progressive springs, linear springs, I'm a linear guy myself, but in the rear, we have a GT350 spring. It's a Magna Ride car. Is that gonna become a limiting factor later on? I don't know yet. I don't think that we should have an issue for a while. I think Lethal's car is a Whipple car that goes eight sixties and a quarter, and they're still using the Magna Ride. So BMR suspension, all of this car. So we got the BMR springs in the, in the rear. And in the front, we actually still don't have a dedicated drag spring. We actually have a BMR performance front spring. They like that combination with the Magna Ride because it's got better street manners and it does very well on the track. The spring rates between a drag and the performance are minimal. We're skipping something very important here. We're going to talk about unsprung weight for a second. So, right down here, you see all that red? What that is, guys, is a VMRK member. I think it saves like 50 pounds. It's pretty substantial, honestly. Anything unsprung that we can get rid of, we definitely want to do that. Eventually, we're going to have to do something with the brakes. Now, the rear. The rear is important, too. And I get a lot of questions about what to do. You know, should I buy this? Should I buy that? And uh, truthfully, you don't need much. And if you make a phone call to BMR, they will actually tell you the same. You don't necessarily need a whole lot to make these things go fast. Power will help you 60 foot this car. Uh, and a tire, you need a tire. What we have is a BMR cradle lockout kit, the BMR 762 long arms. The combination of those two, the CB005 and the CB762, is supposed to eliminate like 99 to 100% of like movement in the IRS and potential wheel hop. It's pretty stout. The cool thing too is there's no added NVH that I've experienced and I hate NVH. I hate it. And I can tell you that there's no cons. There's no cons to running this. Uh, we have the red version. I can't remember off the top of my head the part number, but the red version, uh, the cheaper version of BMR's vertical links. And what else do we have in the rear? I think that is about it. No, no, no. We also have BMR's adjustable tow link. Thing that is completely necessary and I would argue the fact needed to adjust the camber and toe and everything else that you need to adjust in the rear, especially for straight line purposes. You, you want as much contact patch as you can. BMR is a big supporter of this channel. I love their stuff, I love their products. They have really helped to transform the car. Xander7 at bmrsuspension.com, you can save a bunch of money. I don't want this to sound like a, you know, like a big infomercial, but honestly, you know, to be able to save you guys some money, it's my pleasure to be able to do so and uh, free shipping, so that's good too. Corsa exhaust, a big supporter of the channel. Corsa, we have their double X pipe with the active mufflers back here. And I will tell you with a turbo car. <laughs> my favorite sound. I've had several different Mustangs, several different companies of exhaust systems on the car. And this combination that I'm running right now is, it's perfect. Thank you, Corsa. Really appreciate all that you do for the channel. What else have we got? Not a whole lot. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot to go nines these days, honestly, but um, that's kind of a highlight of what we got. So we have a twin turbo car. Yes, you can go with like a Whipple or somebody else or whatever, but I like the turbo because the turbo, this kit that I'm running is rated for somewhere in the ballpark of like 1600 wheel. Um, still stock bottom end. We are head studded, and what else have we got? That's about it, yeah. We know we did valve springs, but I mean, whatever. You know, it's turbo car. That's really my recipe to go nines and potentially high eights. We still have to build the transmission. I got clutches over there ready to go in the car. I really can't wait for eights, honestly. I mean, I thought that it'd be like a really long time before we'd get there, but once we start dialing this car up, dialing it in, learning the car a little bit more, I think it's gonna come faster than we expected, honestly. So anyway, that's gonna wrap up this video. Um, this kind of just a, an overall quick mod list of the car. Go check out video descriptions for a full list of modifications. I've tried to keep it as up to date as possible for everything that is in this car. If you wanna replicate this, this build in some manner. Other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. Uh, have fun racing. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, have a great day, bye-bye.